Greetings, Earthlings! Today we're looking at a relatively new microphone from Audio-Technica. So today we're looking at this guy, the AT2020 USB-I, which is Audio-Technica's iOS-compatible version of the AT2020. If you do want to pick this guy up, it'll set you back around $196. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. For the majority of this review, I have the microphone connected directly to my Mac with the gain on the actual microphone set at maybe 50%. I don't know, there's no markings on it, and the gain in the computer sound preferences has zero impact on the recording level. But I won't do any post-processing, but I may boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. Oh, Jesus. Get out of here. You will get the microphone, you get a microphone stand, you get the 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, you get a microphone mount, you get a 1.5 meter lightning and 1.5 meter USB cable, you get a padded storage pouch, and you get some documentation. Now as far as the build quality, this microphone feels exactly like the AT2020. It has an all metal body as well as a metal grill with a little bit of flex to it, and it's also not too heavy, but it's not too light. Behind the grill, there is a blue LED light to let you know that the microphone is getting power, then on the front, there is the microphone gain control without any markings. Come on, companies, get it right, give us markings. And then on the bottom of the microphone, you'll find a micro HDMI port. But there's nothing else on this thing. There's not even a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for playback or zero latency monitoring. So stupid. But as far as the specs, this thing does have a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a bit depth of 24 bit, and a sample rate of up to 96 kilohertz. Now I'm spinning around the AT2020 USB to show you what the off-axis coloration and rejection is. We will move around to 180 degrees to show you how it sounds from the rear. We will continue moving around to the second 90 degree angle, and then we will rotate and end at the front of the microphone. Now I'm typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. Right on top of the microphone to show you the proximity effect. One foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now let's test the plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now we're looking at the latency of the USB-I with the sample rate set at 48 kilohertz. With an I.O. buffer size of 64 samples, we have 11.5 milliseconds round trip, or 1.3 milliseconds output. Up to 128 samples, we have 14 milliseconds round trip, or 2.7 milliseconds output. And jump up to 256 samples, 19.4 milliseconds round trip, or 5.3 milliseconds output. Now we have the sample rate set at 96 kilohertz, and with an I.O. buffer size of 64 samples, we have 3.5 milliseconds round trip, or 0.7 milliseconds output, up to 128 samples, 5 milliseconds round trip, or 1.3 milliseconds output, and up to 256 samples, 7.5 milliseconds round trip, or 2.7 milliseconds output. So you're currently completely unable to tell what my microphone gain is set at, but I assure you it is set at 100%. I'll decrease it to zero and slowly increase it so you can hear the noise generated by the AT2020 USB-I's preamp. Zero percent. One hundred percent. Now I have the AT2020 USB-I connected directly to my iPhone 10 using the provided micro or mini HDMI to lightning cable. I have the gain set at 100 percent. I am recording at 48 kilohertz, 24 bit 
into the Road Reporter app because Audio Technica does not have their own app. But this is how it sounds recording directly to the iPhone. <laughs> Yes, I'm back with another shack attack And I hope you'll cut me slack Cause this is not a basketball It's a microphone <laughs> I'm sorry Dumbest thing I've ever written, ever I apologize So tonally, I actually did like this microphone now, in terms of pros, I do really like the fact that it has a gain dial on the microphone, as well as the fact that it records in 24-bit up to 96 kilohertz. But then in terms of cons, I have the exact same issue that I did with the Sennheiser hand mic digital. There is no zero latency monitoring, and for USB microphones, that is pretty essential. The microphone also didn't do a tremendously good job at background noise rejection, and just to get nitpicky, there are no markings on the gain dial, so it would be very difficult to recreate a recording or set your gain consistently for calls or anything like that. Then as far as my overall thoughts, on the electric guitar, I did rather like it. It had a very unoffensive tone. It was a little bit aggressive in the top end, which I'm a big fan of. And then it also lacks a bit in the low end, but ultimately that is what you would want from an electric guitar in a full band mix. For the acoustic guitar, it also had a somewhat aggressive tone and sounded a little bit top heavy due to the boost in the treble frequency and the air frequency, but all around it wasn't terrible, it's definitely usable. For singing, the only thing I can really say about it is it does offer a relatively smooth tone. And then for spoken word, nothing really pops out at me as being bad about this microphone, but pointing one thing out, it again does lack a little bit in the low frequency and the body. And now, would I recommend this microphone? I honestly really want to, but no. And the reason that I am saying that is this microphone seems like a very good entry-level music microphone, but for music, you need to have zero latency monitoring so you can stay on time when you're recording to a backing track. I mean, I guess for conference calls, this microphone could work okay, but keep in mind you won't be able to hear yourself, and you need to ensure that you have an iOS device that actually has a 3.5mm headphone jack, which everybody knows is becoming increasingly more rare, or you need to be somebody who has a pair of Bluetooth headphones. So what it comes down to is this microphone just lacks zero latency monitoring, which is essential for what I think this microphone is good for. And when you run a USB microphone in through a computer, out through another sound card, there's gonna be a significant amount of latency, which makes it very difficult to make good recordings. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today. If you found this video full and interesting or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hate it, thumbs down. I also did open up memberships, and you can become a member of the podcastage channel by clicking that blue button down beneath the video. Want more videos? You could also just subscribe because they're free. If you want to hang out in the Discord server, link in the description, and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye.